We are honored to share this next story. It is a story filled with love, respect, and understanding. It is the story of a birth mother and her daughter's adoptive mother. It is the story of Emma and Rachel. My name is Emma, and this is my story. I was a senior in high school when I found out I was pregnant. In that moment when you see the two lines on a pregnancy test and it's not excitement and it's devastation and a lot of fear and disappointment, no one can prepare you for that moment. I think right before graduation or right after is when we started looking at adoption agencies just to see what our options were, to talk to someone, answer maybe some questions. Choosing your child's parents, once again, is something you never think you're gonna have to do. How do you prepare for that? I mean, these are the people that are gonna mold your child's life. When we were choosing the couple, I just remember thinking, well, what is it that I can't provide? Why am I placing her for adoption? Luckily, my family was helping my mom and sisters, and they pointed a few things out about a certain book of one of the families. And the first word of their book was you. You know, the whole time, I never wanted to come off as selfish or that it was about me, that I wanted more for my life and that my child was, was interrupting my plans. I never, that never mattered to me. But to see this family focus their book on me made me realize how they valued others. After deciding that this was the couple for us, we met them. We just clicked and connected and the vulnerability and honesty was so transparent. In most situations, you know, a, a mother feels that bond for nine months. And usually the father, the father just doesn't know or feel it until the baby's born understandably he started to question our decision because he wanted to raise her just as I did. You know, I, I wanted to respect his desires as well and so we walked through the scenario. Okay, so what's gonna happen? I'm not going to A&M. You know, you have a scholarship. You need to be playing football at your school. You need to be doing what you're doing. How are we gonna do this? I need to get a job. And I just remember asking, I mean, do you think that's what's best for her? And he said no. And he goes, I just love her so much. All I could say back was, I know, me too. But it was that answer of, I love her so much that we knew adoption was the right choice for our daughter. Open adoption gave me the opportunity to see my plan work. And there is no greater gift a birth mother can receive than see her daughter, her son, live the life that I knew I couldn't have provided. A powerful story, Emma. You're the birth mother. Rachel, as the adoptive mother, what do you hope to share by having this conversation? I think what's most important when it comes to adoption, especially open adoption, that respect and love has to be at the forefront. Um, that to have you know a healthy relationship, because obviously it is kind of comp can be complicated and complex. But if there's so much respect for the other party and love for the other party, it's easier. Um, and that most importantly, if you remember the child, mm -hmm. is the priority. So I think what can happen is we get caught up in our own emotions and needs, right? And so it's very easy to want to behave for what's best for you. But if you just remember that like our daughter is the number one. So if we do what's best by her, we'll be on the same page. And then it's easier to have, to communicate, easier to make decisions when it's the adoptee that is at the forefront of our mind, if that makes sense. I think when one of the questions that I get the most is, how do you share? Or do you feel com like a, there's a competition? And I think that has never, the surprising thing is that that has never been a problem. It 
never felt like a competition. And I, I, I describe adoption as just more people to love your children. And, you know, I know that I have Emma in my kid's corner. I mean, I can call her at a moment's notice and she would do anything for any of my kids and um, loves them in a way that a mom can only love their kids. And I love that I have that, that support for, for our situation as well. And um, it's just more. If the one word to not describe it is competition, what is the one word to describe that it is? Can I use three? <laughs> more the merrier. The more the merrier. That's something that Rachel and her husband said in the very beginning um, that honestly gave me a lot of permission in my role um, as a birth mom is it, it simplify it. Life is already complicated and messy and can be hard, but why let all these, you know, things get in the way of, of loving someone? And so for them, the more the merrier, you know, um, and allowing me to be in my role, I guess. Why is it important for you all to be here together? I think for us, we've talked a lot about what do we want people to know about our adoption? And I think the main thing for us is we, we want to make everybody realize that it is complicated. It's not simple in this perfect little, yeah. you know, package. It's emotional. It's dr dramatic sometimes. And, but it's, it's just life. And we have to figure it out together. And if we are on the same page, and like Emma said, if we have the, our children in the forefront that we want the best for them, it seems, everything else seems to fall into place. We still have things that we work through. We still have struggles and emotional things. We still go to therapy. You know, that's just part of life in general, whether or not you adopt. Yeah. I think everyone needs support. But if we have a team and we can work together instead of against one another, I think, I think a lot of times a fear is that adoptive parents and birth parents will fight one another. And if you can remove that portion and realize you're actually fighting for the same thing, that's a huge, huge um, blessing in your lives and can be in, in your lives. Yeah. And I would say that, cause you know, the reason it's important to us to have a relationship and for me to have an opportunity to have a relationship with our daughter is, you know, I, I truly, I know in all cases, um, this isn't necessarily like the case for, or for everyone, but I truly do believe open adoption can be a great option for the adoptee because it allows the child to claim their identity in a way and to pursue, and you know, and not every open adoption looks the same, right? And, and semi-open, right? And not a, to paint a broad brush, you know, it's, it is unique for everyone, but at the end of the day, we all want to know where we're from. We are, we're all at least curious. I mean, there's a re reason things like ancestry DNA are so popular. People are just curious, whether or not they want a relationship with their birth parents, but they're just curious. And I, I really, I, I personally believe that it's important to give the adoptee the information and opportunity. You know, our daughter will get to choose if she wants a relationship with me when she's older. You know, I'm not gonna force that on her. I would love it, but I'm available. And at least she has that option. Um, and that's, in, you know, important is I don't want our daughter to ever feel ashamed that she's adopted or there's some secrecy involved in her identity that she was ever not wanted. And so now she gets the full picture as much and gets to know as much as she wants. And so to have that available, I think is really important um, because we wouldn't be doing, have an open adoption if we didn't think it was beneficial to her. I, interesting. Have you prepared yourself for that possibility as slight as, as it is? Probably too much actually. And I think that was a huge part of my grief, grieving, yes. it's never over, grieving process is I never expected her to love me. I never expected her to look at me the way she does. I never expected, I mean, there's this sweet story of 
after um, Rachel had told her that I was her tummy mommy, I think she was two, and come up in conversation yeah. about babies, you know, being in their mommy's tummies. And she's like, well, you know, sweetie, you were in Miss Emma's tummy. And, you know, little, little. So it wasn't a complicated. There were no follow-up questions, you know. She was little. And I see her. Um, I come out um, to spend some time with them. And, again, she's two, maybe three. But she runs up to me, gives me a hug, and says, thank you for being my mommy. And then ran off. And again, and again, people would be like, oh, my gosh, she called you mom. And did that upset you? That was, she didn't continue to call me mom. You know, she calls me Miss Emma. And, of course, Rachel and her graciousness has, that didn't bother her, you know. And, but I never in a million years would have ever thought she would give me such a kind title that I thought I gave away or that she would thank me. You know, I mean, for, especially at that age. I mean, it's just remarkable. Um, and for, yeah, for the, for the way she adores me. Um, I could have never, and so for me, I always thought, even though we were doing open adoption, I prepared for the opposite, where she would never reciprocate a love. And I know? can tell that that means a lot to you. It does. Yeah. Um, Why? Uh, because I love my children so much, and I, um, oh goodness, I love that I get to give that to her, to my daughter, and I get to see my daughter love someone so wholeheartedly and so purely, and my boys too. I have three children, um, and um, it's just, like I said, it's just more. Um, it, you know, and right now my children are young, and so it's, not quite so complicated. They make it so much simpler than we adults yeah. do most of the time. And it's beautiful to see. Um, they, they adore Emma. They want, in, in fact, our daughter was so mad because I'm here and she has to stay home. And she's like, what, 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 no, wait, I'm supposed to go. <laughs> I'm supposed to be with Emma. And, um, you know, I know we are going to have hard questions as yeah. she gets older. Yeah. But, you know, right now it's pure and it's simple and it's just more love. Mm -hmm. And um, it's remarkably beautiful to see. And I, n I never expected it, it to be like this. Let us go back to that moment. What was it like leading up to meeting each other for the first time? It, it was terrifying because as an adoptive parent, you think, how could anybody choose us? How could anybody, you know, go through what their, these kids, they were at the time, were going through? And um, when we met our, our birth parents, actually both, because I have two adoptive children, I fell in love with the birth mothers. And I think that was something that also surprised us. We were not expecting. And I think it's something that's important to note with an open adoption. The birth mothers are in control. They get to choose. They, they, get to, they hold all the reins. And um, that was an important aspect of our adoption. We wanted the birth mothers to have the power in a situation. And, and you have to release your fears a lot in that. Um, but we fell in love with both of our birth mothers. And we just, I think that you, in an adoptive situation, there's a connection. And I, 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 there's nothing else I can describe it. And I've had, I have many friends who now have ad open adoptions and they all feel the same way. No, no matter whether they're complicated or not complicated, there's a connection. And so that's something that was surprising for me. Yeah. And what. You know, we, we kind of wanted to be in Emma's corner whether she chose us or not. I'm sure that made it easier for you. Oh, yeah, because I felt that. You know, I mean, I think for for me, like, I mean, I'll just say, like, as a, as a birth parent, if you decide to choose the parents and you decide to meet them beforehand, I mean, no one can ever. The caseworker can try to prepare you, but... One, to choose strangers to raise your child is unfathomable. I mean, it really is like, I mean, I love this child and I'm gonna choose people I don't, and not every adoption is that way, but at least through our agency, you know, I wanted to choose the parents and, you know, the birth father and I did. And 
Um, so going to meet these strangers who are going to be your child's parents, like it's just, it's hard to wrap your mind around and even being through it, it's like hard to even like comprehend. But really meeting them, it felt like home. Like it was just easy um, and comfortable. You know, our caseworkers joked about how we probably shared too much on the first, <laughs> it's not always advised, you know, but we just were, you know, we, again, we allowed, um, I think our hearts to lead in that way. Um, yes. And we trusted our gut and the, that instinct. And, so that moment, what was that moment like? Oh my gosh. And terrifying. Terrifying. But we just, we kind of leapt into one of those, one yeah. another's arms. But yeah, once we met, it was, like, it was, it yeah. was literally, uh, it was hello and hugs. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I know I, when I left, a huge sense of relief. Mm-hmm. And that was all I could ask for. I mean, that would, is the biggest. And, you know, not all birth mothers feel that way. Um, and that's okay, too. Sometimes it's really awkward for the dynamic can be really awkward. And that's okay, too. It just, you know, wasn't for us. How has it grown from that moment? And a lot of people look at the role of birth parent and adoptive parent. That before the child is born, the birth parent has all the power. And then when the child's adopted, the adoptive parents have all the power. And it's about this power, weird power dynamic. And I think people can get caught up in that. Mm-hmm. Um, but to be honest, for me, I didn't think I had the power necessarily per se. Um, and in fact, I felt very like helpless in a lot of, a lot of that time while I was pregnant. Um, but what I didn't, I would say the way it evolved that I didn't expect um, was and honestly, I think it was a year or two years in, Rachel had written me a letter, I think it was on Mother's Day, and she gave me my title back. Because what I thought is when I placed my daughter for adoption and she became the mom, in fact, we had a conversation about it early on of what I was gonna be called, and I was like, there's only one mom. You're her mom, I gave you that title. You know, I, I, wanna, I wanted so badly to respect her and that, that in a way I was denying the reality mm-hmm. that at the end of the day, though, I am her birth mom, you know, and but I wanted, out of respect for her, you know, I just, I so desperately didn't want to overstep or offend her. And she wrote me the kindest letter, you know, saying, you are her mom too. God just gave her two moms and two dads. And let's own that. And, but she was respectful to me because I, grieving wise, I wasn't there. I, I could not get myself, I mean, I didn't call her my daughter for a very long time. And I think maybe I would just would say birth daughter or whatever, and you know, to I think kind of negate, you know, my my link to her because it was so painful. Um, well, you had to go through grief, and right. we walked through grief with you. Yeah. Our, our daughter is now six, and so that's six years of walking through the ups and downs of the grief process. Right. Uh, you know. Um, it was, which was surprising for us when, when she was placed with us. You know, you're supposed to be excited about this, this baby, and we were, of course, but we were also truly grieving for our birth mothers. We weren't expecting to truly be in the grief yeah. process as well. Yeah. So you're elated and you're excited, but... Because um, we did placement, or yeah, placement in the hospital. Mm-hmm. So at 48 hours after the birth father and I signed away our rights, um, they came and picked her up in the hospital room. And then we chose that, we chose that um, dynamic. So they saw us with our last moments with our daughter, which like, I mean, that is an image that is just, you know, it, it's so interesting because one of the greatest moments in their life is taking their daughter you know, out of the hospital room to take home. And that image is burned into my mind. It's one of the most traumatic, heartbreaking, you know, memories. And so how can something so tragic and so beautiful coexist? You know, but it, do- it, it does. And in an adoption, it does. And I'm just so grateful that I've gotten to reap the benefits of the beautiful side of it. That by through the open adoption and through you know, Rachel and her husband being so kind and gracious with me that I've had the opportunity to see her flourish and see my plan work and see her, you know, thrive because that's why I chose adoption. And so, yeah, I mean, the, I think y'all having, having, I mean, you know, seeing us in the hospital 
also, I think, force them to recognize the reality of adoption, is for a child to be placed for adoption isn't a happy thing. Most birth parents, it's tr absolutely heartbreaking. And I think for a, a lot of people they see, you know, they wanna think of, um, you know, the stork dropping off the baby, right? Like it's not mm -hmm. someone having to grieve to get, to offer, you know, for the baby to be adopted, I guess. All of us understand adoption, but there might be someone watching thinking, if it's so tragic and so traumatic and you're able, why then give up the child? Because it's about the child, not me. You know, I, I think, you know, I'm, my husband and I just had our, our daughter, who's six months old, so, um, you know, experiencing having, a, you know, a child again has been very insightful and, and interesting, you know, with, with my history. But I think for anyone who's a parent, can know that doing what's best for your child isn't easy. And I just, I truly believe that was what was best for my daughter was not me parenting her. I mean, I was 17 when I was pregnant. And don't get me wrong, I, I could have made it work. I may have not gotten to go to college or it might have taken me a long time to get a degree. You know, I may have had to work a couple jobs. You know, I, I don't know what it would have looked like. It wouldn't have been easy. And I think I would have done a decent job and I, she would have been loved, but I just wanted more than the, the basic needs for her to be met. I wanted siblings. I didn't know if I could guarantee that. You know, I wanted a mom and dad that were married and to get, you know, I just, there were things that I desired for, for all my chil you know, children and future children that I knew I, I couldn't guarantee. Rachel, why do you think you grieved so much in this joyous moment for you and your husband? Um, because I knew how much she was giving up, and I knew that, selfishly, I probably could not do the same. And that's just saying a lot about Emma, because she's just an amazingly strong woman. I mean, I, I hope that I would, in the, in the moment, be able to do something as selfless, but honestly, I don't know. And um, so that was probably one of the initial reasons that that we had that grieving process but we also saw the heartbreak because we did become so close so quickly with both Emma and our birth father and we just wanted the best for them and we saw their heartache and there was nothing we could do to make it better. Yeah we were pretty open in communication about that. We were. They were very kind and you know allowing me to express kind of where I was just at. You know, I mean, I think it's important that birth parents don't fully emotionally depend on adoptive parents. I think that dynamic can, can be unhealthy. And, but, um, but I also had a therapist and a very supportive family. Very, so, you know, luckily they weren't my everything, but we had just an open communication. Um, you know, cause there were seasons where visits were just really painful, you know, and, and they gave me that space. Um, that's you something know. that's really important, I think, that we've talked about is that in an adoption, you have to have space and allow for space for people to come and go as they need to, mm -hmm. as they're processing. So allowing time for Emma to grieve and if she needed to not talk for, you know, a month or two right. or, you know, whatever, to be able to have that capability to allow for distance or to be able to have the, the capability to forgive if mm -hmm. there's distance for yeah. a certain amount of time. Yeah. Um, and just know that people need that. Grace. It's grace. Right. It's absolutely grace. And just being able to have that flexibility yeah. within a, an adoption. Because there's so many different people and there's so many different factors. And there's birth parents and there's adoptive parents and there's birth grandparents and adoptive grandparents. It's not just yeah. one child yeah which was surprising to us because <laughs> we thought we were adopting one child and we we ended up adopting a whole family <laughs> oh yeah not even that friends too they oh, went friends. and visited my friend and you know out of state because they just happened to be in town and took her out to dinner and it's so just it's, more it's more. everyone the you more, know the merrier the right. more the merrier exactly, exactly. so we've talked about some pre-conceived uh, notions like that the birth parent has all the power until right 
the baby moves in with the adoptive parent and then they have all the... Any other preconceived notions y'all want to make sure you put out there that people shouldn't have? Yeah, I, I would say, and you probably could speak on this as well, especially coming from the adoptive parent perspective, but that um, there's a reason birth parents place their child for adoption. And I think there's a, a fear, and I get it. I mean, listen, like I totally understand where it comes from, but you know, where maybe a lot of adoptive parents have this fear that like, you know, the birth parent is gonna wanna take their baby back. If a birth parent goes through the process of choosing adoption, they just wanna know their plan worked. You know, and, and that can look different. Yeah, some, some people wanna actually see it through visits or communication. Some people, you know, it's too painful to see their child and they just are, are happy to, you know, maybe close that door and move on to the next chapter of their life. Um, but I think just for adoptive, it, it would, you know, for adoptive parents to know and find comfort in that what, we wouldn't go through that if we didn't want our child to be raised by those individuals mm -hmm. and to find security in their roles, yes. you know? In these last six years, is there anything that went one way that you thought would go another way? I didn't know what open adoption would look like for us. Again, it. You see so many different types of adoption. Um, I grew up with, you know, my mom's also a birth mom. And so I had a, a sister that had been placed up for adoption. Um, and so I, I had an idea, but I, I would have never anticipated for us to have as open of a relationship. And, because it, but it evolved naturally that way. It wasn't expected. I thought I would get maybe one visit. We were thinking a year. it was going to be more a typical a visit every six months, a once a year, yeah. something like that. And of course, we loved you, but you, yeah. we didn't know yeah. that it was going to be more than that and and be a lifelong friendship. Because truly, I mean, I told her recently. I said, when our daughter turns sixteen, I'm really glad she gave us two moms because she's gonna. <laughs> Give us a run for yeah. our money. So, you know, it's, um, I think um, the openness has been a surprise, but it's been a beautiful surprise. Not everybody can be open. And that's, that's a hard thing. Right. Again, it's, it's about the distance and it's about the child. Right. And sometimes the distance has to be there in order for the child's well being. Right. Because again, it goes back to like, if there's anything someone needs to know about adoption to have a healthy relationship, whether or not that's closed or open, is if love and respect are most important and the child is at the forefront of your mind and your priorities, things will fall into place. And that might look like no visits. What's best for the child and what's best for the birth parent or adoptive parent or um, you know, what respecting and loving the other party looks like is no visits. And that might just be that reality for hopefully you know, a short time or, or, or whatever it is in that circumstance. So what went into the decisions to have an open relationship or the, did it just evolve as y'all went? I think, I think I definitely evolved. Yeah. However, Emma's, birth, uh, Emma's mother was also a birth mother. And so when we were in the early process, Emma was pregnant, her mother and the adoptive mother of her it's so complicated. Yeah. Are you all, should we draw a <laughs> diagram, a little family tree? So her mother and the, her adoptive family, the parents, came to our home and sat down with us and said, okay, this is how we have done this over the past 20 years. Yeah. Let me show you what we have learned. Right. And at this point, you had selected us, but until that baby is in your arms and papers are signed, Emma could have changed, changed her mind at any moment. And so the, the fact that her mother was willing to come and, and have this very raw, very open conversation with us was incredible yeah. and was an, an incredible um, legacy to pass down yeah. to Emma. Because that, that was criteria, criteria, I hate saying that, but it was something that we were looking Non-negotiable? Yeah that honestly that we were looking for an adoptive parents is it needed to be they needed to be open to an open adoption that was critical to me because I really and there's books out there on it um that I feel very passionate about but like I really do believe it is in the best interest of the child to consider some again it can be semi it can be you know what people are comfortable with um but I really feel that that is in the best interest of the child to give that option and so for me 
that was that was something that I I only would consider couples that were okay with that. And you know, as you know, a child growing up with a sister, I was proud of. And it was weird because you know I'm seven and I'm like, well, I actually have four sisters, you know. And my mom's like, we're like, you know, at the cash register, and you know, I'm like talking about my sister who's placed for a, you know, or whatever. And it's again, it's messy, but that's life. And I was proud to own her as my sister. I didn't grow up with her. We had different dads, but I loved her. Mm -hmm. And so I, I want that for everyone in our lives. Like she said, it's not just us and and our daughter. It's friends and family and extended family that are involved in this. And um, so I don't know, I just, I, that was really important to me. I had a positive experience with open adoption. Um, so I know that that's what I hoped for. What did you see in each other that made this decision more comfortable for the both of you? I think I thought, I, I saw myself sitting across the table. I thought, that's what I wish I had been like at 17. I wish I had been as mature and as, Not as wise as her at 17. So um, I think that was, again, it's that connection. And I think that um, a lot of people would be surprised when they if they choose open adoption or adoption at all, that they will connect with their birth mothers. Um, it's, a, it's, it's an important piece that's yeah. it's a beautiful piece. Yeah. Yeah, and I think what made me at ease is like when Rachel said earlier that, you know, they really were in our corner. And I felt that. After I met them, it didn't feel like they just want my baby, like I was being used, mm -hmm. which I think a lot of birth parents can struggle with. Birth parents can, you know, feel used in a sense of like their only purpose is just you to mean give a baby. Birth moms. Yes, birth yes. moms, yes. But, but birth dads too, yeah. you know, I mean. Which we need to say is an important yeah, piece. Yeah, very important this, piece. Um, that is often overlooked. Overlooked, is for the sure. Is fathers. Yes. And, um, and so I think when, with, with Rachel and her husband, it, for me it was like, I didn't feel like they were using me for our baby. Like, just be nice to me, so I'll give, you know, choose them or, or go through with the adoption. Um, I, I truly felt that I knew they were in our corner and wanted what was best for us, which they didn't have to. You know, they, they didn't need to care about us in that way, but they were, and, um, you know. But I think if you had felt that, you wouldn't have chosen us. Right. And that is why it is important for the birth mothers to have the, the, the say. Right. And I think yeah. it's a, an important piece of it. Yeah. Why, did you, why did you tell her you were in her corner? I think we just wanted them to win. I, like I said, we fell in love with our birth parents and we just wanted them to win in life. You know, we realized they were going through something that was so tragic and so life-changing. Um, and we just wanted them to make it. You know, we didn't want this to be the end of their story. We, we kept saying, this is just the beginning of your story. And who knows where this is going to lead and what this is go where this is going to take you. And, um, yes, it's life altering and life changing and um, really difficult. Yeah. But it's not the end. Yeah. And I think for at the time, you know, you were young. It feels that way. And you felt this was the end. Yeah, which I think for a ways. lot of birth parents, you know, that unplanned pregnancy, it, it feels that way. Um, and I think y'all were, were just encouraging in that, that it's, it doesn't have to be, you know, because when any any type of trauma or tragic event happens to anyone in life, you know you have it changes your trajectory. But but at some in some way you almost have to you know you can't control everything. But which way are you going to let it lead you? You know, and it, it can stump you, you know, or you know it can can motivate you and kind of transform your perspective. Because I mean I know and I say all that. I mean at the time shame totally drove all my decisions. I was very ashamed. I hid my pregnancy. Um, I was so embarrassed and, you know, looking back, I mean, what were you embarrassed of being a pregnant teen? I mean, I, you know, I have a very, I'm very religious and have a very strong faith and, um, there was this cognitive dissonance, right? 
here I was pregnant, having sex before marriage, you know, and all the, and that didn't follow my values and what I wanted for my life. And, you know, I was also a senior in high school. So um, by the time I had her, it was the fall after graduating. Um, and so you're also in that age, your senior, you know, senior year, and you're excited to freedom and independence and, you know, going off to college, all that, and you have all these aspirations. Um, and all of a sudden, I, you know, I had found myself pregnant and, you know, while everyone else was worried about applying for schools and figuring out living and what they're going to put on the graduation cap, I'm figuring out what am I going to do with this baby? And in secrecy too, which was, you know, I, it, it breaks my heart when I think of like me then. Um, I wish I was kinder to myself. I really do. That I was very hard on myself and it was very lonely. It was very lonely and isolating. You know, luckily I had a very supportive family. Um, I could not commend my family enough for how kind they were to me and how supportive in a situation that impacted them too. And that's something else, I mean, I'm very passionate about that, that it does, it impacts so many more people than just you. And, um, but my family was so gracious and kind to me um, going through that. And so they respected, you know, that I wanted to keep it more private and, but what's been beautiful and something, you know, you asked earlier about kind of what's evolved or changed or surprised, has surprised us. And I know for me, like, I am so proud of my daughter. I, like, could not be more proud mm -hmm. of her. And I am honestly really proud of myself for, for the decisions I made and how, and not to pretend like I made the perfect decisions or handled it perfectly well, but at my age to, to do a hard thing for, for someone else, I can say I'm proud now, you know, and to not allow that shame to, to totally cloud my judgment and my, not my judgment, but just my perspective of it all, and that I can be open about it, you know, and, and not feel it has to be this secret. I mean, we, we truly do love sharing our story because um, I think that's what can transform lives is when people can have hope about what adoption can look like, you know, that... It's not a lifetime movie or a, you know, you, these crazy stories you hear that this can happen. How does it make you feel to hear Emma so passionately say that she's proud of your daughter? She called me when that moment happened. And she called me that day and she was like, it shifted. And I, I'm proud of everything. And that was... I mean, again, it, we wanted to. We wanted her to win. We wanted her to succeed. We wanted her. You know, we've walked with her through these years of grief and these years of, you know, we had to walk through because because we have the right as the as the adoptive parents to cut communication, right. and so we've had to walk through that. Like Emma, we're here. We're not going anywhere. We've promised you this. We've made this decision with you. Yeah. You know, and those were things we had to work through. And we've, for her to finally let go of that fear and get let go of that shame yeah. and just find pride has been beautiful to see. Which would have not happened if it weren't for her and her husband. I, and I don't say that lightly. Like, I, I sometimes think um, it can be challenging for adoptive parents to understand, you know, we talk about power, but but truly, like, they they hold a lot of, you know, opportunity, I would say, for the trajectory of a birth parent and their, their child and what that can, and because they were so open and patient with me, I was allowed to become proud. Um, I think that would, I, I hope I would have come to that. I mean, we'll never know, but like y'all, y'all made it easier or quicker or whatever it was, I think for me to, to get there. I think it's obvious, but what qualities were you looking in adoptive parents? So the open adoption was like kind of a factor for me that was really important. Um, faith was really important to me. Um, you know, I grew up in a faithful home and, and that was something, you know, I helped raise my children with. So that was really important. Um, some other things was, you know, I have siblings. I, I love the thought of, you know, I loved, I loved the idea that she would have siblings. Yeah, the, that, and then, I don't know, I'm trying to remember, it's so crazy to think looking back. What were you searching for? What qualities were you searching for in a birth mom? So, I, we were pretty open um, as far as, we 
really didn't have a parameter or any, you can choose and pick and you can kind of choose, but we were kind of open to anything. We were not, we did not know, we just knew that there was a child out there and so we didn't really have parameters. <laughs> <laughs> we talked about the surprises along the way. There was also a big twist along the way. So two years in, um, I got a phone call that I have a sister that I did not know about. And she was adopted at birth. She was, for us, the, the big family secret that we did not know about. And I never wanted that for my kids. Mm -hmm. I don't want them to feel like they're the big family secret. I now have a beautiful older sister who is, amazing. Um, she's amazing, she's wonderful, and she has loved me all of my life because she's known about me all of her life. And I've had someone in my corner that I didn't know about, and now she's in my life, and our kids went to camp together this summer and did things, you know, again, it's things, if you're, if you're, if you let yourself be open to it and just see what happens, you know, you can be very surprised. Yeah. How could you have ever imagined this? Uh, <laughs> we could not. Do you have the answer? <laughs> we could not, in a, our wildest dreams, have it ima imagined this. You know, you, get, you expect to get married and you expect to have your, you know, 3.5 children or 2.5. I don't right. even know what the... This was never on our radar and I wouldn't change an ounce of it, mm -hmm. honestly. That's the that's been a surprising thing. I mean, we've we, it's been traumatic and it's been dramatic, but I could not imagine my life without Emma. Yeah. And I wouldn't change it even with all the pain and all the roller coasters and twists. Yeah. Tough one here. Was there ever a time in the process where you had second guesses about the decisions you were making? Personally with Choosing adoption, absolutely not. I, that was something that was very steadfast before, during, and after. And, and that isn't the case for all birth parents. There can be those, and not that I didn't have what ifs. Don't, you know, I mean, it's important to acknowledge, like, of course I, you know, kind of had these like fantasies and daydreams of if I was a mom, you know? And um, of course there was the what if and you know, sometimes longing for that, you know, so desperately wanting to be the one, whole, you know, soothing her when she's upset, you know, that, that existed. But I never for one second doubted if adoption was the right choice. Um, and I mean, to be honest, I, I think that's a God thing. I don't think that would be from within. I think that was, you know, God, but. I knew, I knew we wanted to adopt. Um, we have adoption in our family. We have cousins and, and family members. And so we, my husband and I, when, before we married, we knew we both wanted to adopt at some point. But we felt we were going to have biological children and then adopt. And we were able to have one biological child and then really struggled. And so it, you know, it, it, just, it just seemed to fit. But we were open to it from the very beginning because I have the most amazing cousin who is adopted who is just a joy and a treasure. And um, he's a big reason why I wanted to have an adoption in our family. This seems, for someone looking on, probably looking on the outside, this seems like a lot of work. <laughs> Anyone who's willing to listen to me talk as much as I do, yes. That's a lot of work. <laughs> so do you recommend this for people? I mean, 100%. Look, it's complicated, but what life is not complicated? Right. What family is not complicated and pieced right. together? Any relationship worth having, anything worth having, right, is gonna be hard and like worth working hard for. Mm -hmm. You know, whether or not that's a career or, you know, a relation, whatever it is, and so it's it's worth. You don't, I guess, think about how hard it is when it's worth it. Does that make sense? You know. Um, again, I can acknowledge that it hasn't been easy. Yeah. But how do you decide know. on what you share with each other? I mean, honestly, transparency. Uh, we say the hard things, and we give. We have to. We have to say, I need some space. I need some time. I need. We have to be able to say those things in order to put our daughter first. Yeah. Um, 
And I think we are in a unique circumstance where, you know, Rachel and her husband have really become mentors for my husband and I. And so that I think also is like outside of our daughter, we have a relationship, which that just organically happened over time. And that's not going to be the case for everyone. So we probably are a little even more transparent than your average adoptive mom, birth mom relationship, just because we've developed a relationship outside of her. But that took time. Right. You know, that's something that, you know, it, we didn't happen overnight. Of course, yeah. we loved her overnight. We, you know, all of that stuff. But we had to work toward this. Yeah. And like I said before, we were six and a half years into this. And we have to work. Yeah. Because we're human. We're flawed. Yes. And I can't imagine um, you're going to get angry with each other. Yeah. And as the adoptive parent, you get angry at something she might do. How do you work through that as opposed to saying, she's not going to see our daughter? So that's something that my husband and I have um, really talked about. We don't ever want to close that door again, ever. COVID was kind of an example of this where we wanted to do a visitation, but of course everyone has COVID. And so we wanted to social distance. And so we were literally standing uh, you know, across the yard, waving at one another, and it felt so wrong for us, for us. And I know that's, a, you know, a, a little different circumstance, but it, we left there and we said, we will never deny her again. And I called Emma and I said, Emma, that felt so wrong. And she just burst into tears because it had brought up all those fears of hers, of us closing that door. And, yeah. and it's just, it's something that's important, you know, again, being able to be transparent with yeah. her that if it's not okay for our, our daughter, that we need to step back. Yeah. I want you to know that we are here, but we need to step back yeah. for our daughter. And so we have to, Emma and I have to be able to allow ourselves the capability to do that, yeah. even as hard as it would be with transparency. And what was so great about, you know, that circumstance that was challenging was she allowed me then the space to say, yeah, that hurt. And I know that that, this is out of your, you know, COVID, like no one had, you know, it was just chaos. And so it was like, not that that was her choice in the sense of, you know, trying to figure out how to handle the situation. But for me to say, yeah, that, that brought up a lot for me because it was a reminder that you have the ability to, to keep me from my daughter. Even though I, I know that won't happen, that's the biggest fear a birth parent can have. You know, especially that has, you know, an open adoption that, you know, even though I, I don't like the whole power, you know, power thing that we talked about, it does exist. The adoptive parents do have the ability to sever all ties. And that's terrifying as a birth parent. And COVID brought that up. There was this ability, you know, not because they wanted to, um, where they could keep her, you know, keep her from me or whatever. Um, and that what that was probably a very hard, that was a hard because we both felt helpless mm-hmm. in that. But we had a commu- we just gave each other the space to feel it and express it, and I think that was important. Did your daughter get a space to feel it and express it? She's still very young. Yeah. And so I know there's going to be hard times where we have to help her work through some of the things about processing adoption and processing her story. And, but thankfully I have a partner who's going to help us with that. And we'll just take it one day at a time because yeah. it's life, that's what you do. Yeah. What have you learned from Rachel? Oh my gosh, how to be a mom, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still trying to I, are you gonna, I, I literally <laughs> told her yesterday, I was like, oh, I'm just so glad you're many years ahead of us to be able to tell us how to parent. <laughs> Um, oh my gosh, everything, there's a reason. I, I consider her a mentor. There are so, I mean, just her and her husband are so wise and, and honestly, just most importantly, kind and loving. And that is at the forefront of their mind anytime they make a choice. Is, is it loving? Is it Christ-like? You know, is it, that's how they determine what the right thing is to do. And it's just such a beautiful reminder um, to see that. Because, you know, people can talk about that but you have to see that to know how to live it, which is the biggest challenge for all of us, right? To be a good person and, um, and 
But honestly, the way they love is remarkable. And how often they put aside their own needs. And I'm like, she talks about, you know, me doing that with the adoption, but I mean, they do it all the time. Um, and they embrace it. They embrace the chaos. <laughs> like absolutely, em it's they, chaos. <laughs> but embrace it and, and just with a smile and what's the loving thing to do? I don't know, I could go on and on. That's a good question. <laughs> Um, yes, my caseworker was talking with us, and they said, she said, okay, I'm going to tell you what the books say to do, and I know you're going to do the opposite, <laughs> but uh, it, you're very, your kind words, that's way too much, but <laughs> you just have to be flexible, and you have to be open, and you have to be able to be flexible, I think, with, with, with any relationship. What have you learned from Emma? <sighs> Golly, what have I learned from Emma? <sighs> uh, I'm just going to, I, I've never in my life seen someone do something as selfless and as brave and as terrifying as what she did for our family. And um, I, that's what I've learned from Emma. I mean, many things, but that's the most poignant one is that I have learned to, I've, she's shown me grace in a way that's the, on this side of heaven, <laughs> you know, that I never thought would be possible or I'd never, you know, I never thought I'd see. It was remarkable what she did for us. And for our family. I love you. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> Emma, hearing what Rachel just said, I want you now to tell me what you would tell Emma then at 17 years old. What would you like to say to her? I'd like you to speak with her. You'll be okay. I mean, you're worthy, you're loved, you know, you'll be okay. You know, and I just think in that moment it was, you know, you're experiencing a love you've never felt before with this beautiful, miraculous gift of a child. And then you're signing away your rights and every part of your body, it feels wrong. Every, every ounce of you, it. It's not natural. Um, and so I, I, I truly didn't know how I was going to wake up, how I was, you know, going to move forward. I mean, put one foot in front of the other. I didn't know how the grief felt that physically overwhelming. And so I wish I could just tell myself to breathe and, you know, you'll be okay. What would you tell her about the shame that she felt? Oh, just wait till you feel the pride that you'll have. I mean, shame is strong. Shame is a very powerful thing. Shame is, you know, yeah, very, very powerful. But oh my gosh, when you allow yourself to have an unfiltered joy and pride, you know, and, and something as, I think, again, a miraculous relationship with, with a, a child is... Um, more fruitful than you can imagine, um, and more fulfilling than you can imagine. So yeah. My last question, your daughter's gonna go back and see this one day, mm -hmm. later on in life. What would you like to say to her? You are so worth it. Mm -hmm. You are so worth all of it. And we would, both of us together, would do all of it over again. Took the words right out of my mouth.